Fortress Paper is making changes to its management ranks. The president and CEO Chad Wasilinkoff is moving into a newly created executive chairman position on October the 1st. He is being replaced in the CEO chair by Yvonne Pelletier, who is currently running the company's specialty cellular subsidiary. For a look at why Fortress is making these changes right now, we do have the president and CEO Chad Wasilinkoff joining us in Vancouver. Chad, good to be with you today. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's talk a little bit about these management changes. What's the rationale behind them? Uh, we originally went out for a new executive search over two years ago, and during that time we'd already indicated or, or knew that this was coming. Uh, so when we first hired Yvonne, uh, it was a sort of a trial period to make sure he was the right person, the right candidate. And from the board management's perspective, it's been uh, the, absolutely the right decision. So for the last 12 months or so, we did start this transition process, and we're just waiting for the right time, and mm. uh, we feel that time is now. Chad, what is Yvonne going to bring to the table here? Uh, he's a very strong operational leader. He brings a lot of trust and confidence within the entire management team, with the unions at the various mills. He's very methodical, very dedicated, and again, we're very excited to, for him to uh, expand his roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, Chad, I'm wondering as well, your new role, executive chairman, what exactly does that mean? From what I understand, uh, you will be focused on strategic in initiatives, specifically ones on growth. What does that mean? What does it look like? So if we look back over the last year or so, Fortress has had some operational challenges, which which ends up being quite distracting and, and time consuming to deal with all these day to day issues. So that'll pass over to Yvonne, freeing up my time for these growth initiatives, as you mentioned. So I have s several special projects I'm working on, some of which are meant to shore up the balance sheet, improve our overall liquidity. Uh, and with that, and with excess capital, then we can get back on a growth track. Fortress Paper was always created and was always intended to be a growth vehicle, uh, but we've had to put that on hold here for the last year or two with challenging market conditions, challenging commodity prices. Mm -hmm. We got hit with a duty out of China that we had to deal with, but again, we feel all of that is behind us, and now we can get back to our uh, original intent. Chad, what does that mean, though? Uh, asset sales first and foremost? No, at this point, we don't believe we'll be uh, selling any more of our assets. We've got two great businesses. Uh, we still think they have both uh, good growth potential over the next 12 to 24 months. So we'll continue to develop those. Mm -hmm. However, at any time, if uh, an offer was made, we would uh, entertain it. We mm -hmm. are uh, sort of a holding company and looking to maximize value for our shareholders and mm -hmm. various stakeholders. Chad, what does uh, the industry look like right now for dissolving pulp? Uh, of course, you, you know, you talked about operational issues, pricing, as well as uh, uh, import duties. What's the state of affairs right now? What does the landscape look like? Yeah, we've, the dissolving pulp market went through about a two and a half year decline from about $2,700 a ton down to $800 a ton. It's sort of based out there and, and stayed that way for about six to nine months. Now over the last three to four months, we finally start to see an increase there. It's up to about $840 a ton. And most of the third party analysts are expecting it to climb over 900 and long term trend line should be north of $1,000 a ton. Hmm. It's just not sustainable at these low prices. Uh, is that, uh, an, in, in terms of the pricing increases, is that a function of um, supply or demand? Maybe both. Yeah, the, a combination of both. The, the sharp drop or decline in prices was due to too much capacity coming online. So while the underlying customers uh, and the demand was still there and growing at double digit rates, there was just too much of that capacity, as I mentioned. Now that it's working through that capacity, inventories have tightened up, prices are increasing, uh, probably yeah. 30 to 40 percent of the global production is operating at a loss even at these prices so it, again it's just not sustainable long term and we, we expect it to be more rationalized uh, in the coming years. But what's demand looking like? You know we're, I'm, I'm hearing more and more commentary that, uh, that you know there are weak demand, uh, weak, weak sales uh, from large companies around the globe right now and I'm, I'm just wondering what you're hearing what you're seeing. Yeah, our customers in the viscose industry are still growing anywhere between 6 and 8 percent annually. So very good and robust times, even in a challenging environment. It also has a high correlation to GDP. So even in a, a challenging global environment that way, uh, again, there's still growth here. So once the economy globally can pick up, mm -hmm. we think... Uh, viscose prices and viscose demand can get back into double-digit growth long term. Mm. I've got to get your take on the uh, dramatic decline in the loonie. What's that doing to your business and what do you think about it? Yeah, it's so, uh, you know, we operate in Canada with our dissolving pulp operation, so the declining price, uh, the Canadian dollar is definitely a help for us. Same with oil, we do uh, consume a lot of it through our chemical process, so both of those are uh, definitely helping with our overall global cost structure. 
to what degree? And I ask you that in the sense that I, I've talked to a number of companies that haven't found enough of a benefit because of it. We're finding it quite material. Uh, it'll be in the millions of dollars already just here in the last few uh, months with this uh, recent sharper decline. Hmm. Uh, so it is very, very impactful to our bottom line. Chad, I know you were on the uh, on with us just a couple of weeks ago talking to one of my colleagues about the uh, the money printing business. What's that looking like? That division of ours is going very well. We have a very large order book. Uh, the growth uh, is still there. Obviously, there's a lot of turmoil in the world, and again, there's counterfeiting everywhere. So it's it's a very stable, consistent, steady business, and uh, we think there's very good upside for us there over the next few years. Chad, uh, just last question here, handing the reins to a new CEO. Uh, how do you feel about that in terms of um, where you're at today versus founding the company back in 2006, handing the company off a little bit here? Yeah, you know, I, I've been waiting for this for a while. Uh, I really wanted to get back to growth and and mergers and acquisitions and uh, building businesses rather than uh, you know the day-to-day -day grind of the operations. So I'm really looking forward to it. I know Yvonne is absolutely up for the challenge and excited by it. You know, there's a little tender spot. You know, it, it, <laughs> this is sort of my baby. I brought it up since uh, 2006, but mm -hmm. uh, he's grown up and it's time to pass it on and there, there is no better time. We have a great quarter coming out in the next few weeks and we're expecting a better one after that. So again, I, I feel I'm leaving the company in uh, very good hands mm -hmm. and at a very good time uh, operationally. Chad, great to be able to speak with you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. That's Chad Oslinkoff from Fortress Pay.